Welcome to Mega World Mexico. Okay, let's head down to Cancun and visit a one-of-a-kind museum. His name is Jason DeCarries Taylor, a sculptor who has carved a niche for himself with an unusual art. His sculptures don't go in a gallery. They go underwater. Taylor is the creator behind Cancun's unique underwater museum, a collection of one-of-a-kind exhibits with more than 400 sculptures that also act as a coral reef. We're trying to create structures which coral will flourish on, that will uh, aggregate fish, provide a sort of living area for a whole sort of host of uh, marine creatures. Like coral everywhere, Cancun's fragile reefs are threatened by too many tourists. Climate change, even hurricanes. Scientists are predicting in 50 years we could lose 80% of our coral reefs. That's an incredibly disastrous outcome. So Taylor was hired by Cancun's National Marine Park to come up with a creative solution, combining his passion for sculpting with his love of scuba diving. Not only use the sculpture to create artificial reefs, but also to convey messages about the environment around us. What began as a few concrete sculptures in 2009 is now the largest underwater museum in the world. There are four separate submerged exhibits, but the main attraction is this one, 400 life-size sculptures molded from real people known as the Silent Evolution. Anchored together on the ocean floor, they're built to survive a Category 4 hurricane. We've built them in a configuration that points into the current. If a big storm comes along, these figures will disperse the power of it. A labor-intensive process. Each sculpture is months in the making. From finding the models for the sculptures, uh, cover them in plaster and alginate, making silicone molds, and then from that silicone mold, making a cement piece, ultimately. Pieces of coral are planted in some of the sculptures to encourage growth. Mother Nature takes care of the rest. So hopefully in uh, five or six years it should be completely covered in a range of hard and soft corals. Now, after months in the studio, Taylor is unveiling four new pieces for the museum. We're going to have to put some wood to bring it out. The next challenge is to get those statues into the water. It's the first time we pick it up by the crane, so I'm always looking for any sort of cracks. This is always a stressful part. Most of the sculptures weigh between one and two tons apiece. Getting the women and children onto the truck is easy. The challenge? A fat guy on a couch watching TV. <laughs> when we moved it last time, it wasn't put down flat on the ground, so it's touching the earth, so we can't get the cable underneath it. Why don't we just lift it up a touch with a crane? But with a little creativity and some elbow grease, the sculptures are loaded and on their way. Then another crane moves the sculptures onto the ship. It all goes according to plan. Then, a potential disaster. A cable comes loose during the load. Luckily, no one is injured, and they carry on. But the real concern now is the weather. We've got all four sculptures on the boat. That's pretty good news. The only thing next is uh, to see how the weather holds out. It's looking ominous. <laughs> The next day, the mission is called off. Heavy winds and waves could cause the boat to capsize. But after a 36-hour delay, the team is ready to head out into the Caribbean Sea. It's quite a strong current today. Visibility is, is average, so um, we, have, we still have some obstacles to get over. It's a dangerous job for the divers. If something goes wrong, they could be crushed by a two-ton concrete couch potato. You're trying to communicate with the crane operator 
um, and he can't even see where he's placing it um, and he can't see us and we can't talk to him so um, we have to have a very strict command of hand signals to position it. The sculptures must now be placed on the ocean floor. Each one has its own designated position and each must be placed with surgical precision so it doesn't damage the surrounding coral. The first three statues are right on target, but placing the final one won't be as easy. This statue is probably the closest we've done to the, to the reef so far, so we'll see how it goes. It takes almost half an hour, but the sculpture is gently placed in position facing the sun for maximum effect. The final step is to anchor the sculptures to the ocean floor so they won't move during a storm. There we have it. Four more sculptures in the museum. For Taylor, it was a demanding but successful day. Now he faces his biggest challenge, moving the heaviest sculpture he's ever made without crushing the coral or his crew. Welcome back to Mega World Mexico, and time to check in again with our friends in Cancun as they attempt to add their largest sculpture ever to an underwater museum. We head south to see if Jason and his team have come up with a solution to move a very heavy concrete car. This is the biggest challenge we've had so far. Um, it's a full-scale replica of a Volkswagen Beetle. The Beetle is Jason Taylor's latest addition to Cancun's underwater museum. Hundreds of life-size sculptures that are helping to preserve the area's fragile coral reef. And it also has these doors down the bottom and those are for lobsters to actually crawl inside and, and create a home. But before the sculpture can go in the water, it has to hit the road. Jason estimates he used about five tons of concrete to create the beetle. But when the crane starts to lift, it appears he's underestimated. The problem is not the crane, it's the boat crane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's floating, it rocks. We think it's much more, we think it's eight tons. So that's going to overload the crane in Cancun, so we're going to have to rethink this one at the moment. This sculpture is now eight times heavier than a real beetle. There's no way they're getting that kind of weight on their boat. We're very worried that if we take the beetle out there, it could sort of uh, make the boat keel over, which is obviously uh, a very bad scenario. Taylor's team has no option. They have to go with plan B, float the car on the water, supported by airbags. The main thing is to attach airbags on or lift bags to the structure, put it in the water, and then those lift bags take all the weight and allow us to tow it to the actual site where we're going to deploy it. But it's risky. They've never done this before. Getting the air pressure right is crucial. Too much, and the car will bob up and down in the water. Too little, and they'll have a much more serious problem. The worst case scenario is that we haven't put enough on it, and it starts to sink. And then if it starts to sink, that could be really bad. So what's the plan with these boys? Are they going along the top of the spine of the car, or are they, we're going to put them around the sides? No, we're going to put them on the sides. We don't want it to get very uh, deep in the water. On the dock, Taylor worries that the car won't float. Lower than I wanted. There we go, look, no weight, no weight. That's good, that's good. Way bien, way bien. The sculpture does float, but barely. It's a very good start that, it, that it's floating and that uh, I think it should work. The challenge now is towing the car to its final resting spot 10 kilometers away. Once there, they'll release the pressure in the large blue airbags and the sculpture will sink into position. The smaller orange boys will stay inflated for a smooth descent. But when they're cut loose, the divers better make sure they're a safe distance away. If anybody's at the surface, um, they will get hit by a missile. And if anybody gets caught attached to it, you'll be thrown out of the water. It's incredibly dangerous. Towing eight tons of concrete is a slow process, but less than an hour into the journey, something goes terribly wrong. The ropes holding the airbags suddenly snap, and the sculpture begins to sink. Oh, yeah. 
the beetle falls to the bottom of a shipping canal, still nine kilometers from where it's supposed to be. The next day, divers refloat the sculpture. But once they start towing again, things go from bad to worse. Choppy seas dislodge the airbags and the car goes vertical. They have no choice but to cut it free from the rigging. It's a setback for Taylor, but as soon as the seas die down, they'll try again. Eventually, the sculpture does reach its final destination, and a perfect touchdown on the ocean floor. This has definitely been the most problematic. It's, it's the heaviest single structure that I've made so far, so a uh, huge success to, to have got it in safely. With the concrete car now anchored in the right parking spot, a new underwater star is born. Within days, it will be covered in algae, and in a few years, it will be completely covered in coral. It's all designed to take the pressure off the natural reef and provide a cool environment for divers. Well, that's gonna do it for our mega tour of Mexico. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.